The procedure begins with the placer inserting the feeding tube into the patient's nose, as can be seen here by the nasal hairs. The tube will then progress down the back of the patient's throat, heading towards the larynx. The patient is swallowing, so we'll see some rapid movement, and will quickly progress down into the esophagus. At around the 30 centimeter mark, we will pause to determine that we are in the correct location. The esophagus is a long, hollow, muscular organ that collapses on itself. You will be looking for the tissue of the esophagus to contract around the tip of the feeding tube. You can use the insufflation bulb to add air and create space, as can be seen in the dark image on the right of the screen. Continue to progress down towards the lower esophageal sphincter, to about the 50 centimeter mark, where you should be entering into the stomach. The tissue of the stomach differs from that of the esophagus. It can be easily visualized by the smooth tissue and the presence of gastric pits, which resemble freckling. We'll also be looking for a large cavernous space and the presence of rugal folds. In order to visualize the rugal folds of the stomach, the placer retracts the feeding tube into the esophagus. As you can see, the tissue of the esophagus now collapses around the end of the feeding tube and then progresses back into the stomach, as can be seen by the presence of gastric pits. The placer may continue to progress the tube down to the 70-75 centimeter mark to migrate the tube into the small bowel. If no movement is seen on the console, it's likely that the tube may be coiling, and you may need to retract the tube away from the lining of the stomach, or add air utilizing the insufflation device. This will allow you to visualize the large, irregular rugal folds as well as the dark cavernous stomach. If any moisture collects on the end of the camera, continue to progress the tube into fluid or up against the tissue to resolve any visualization issues. Here, we're seeing movement and progressing down towards the base of the stomach, where we're going to look for rapid movement as well as any changes in the tissue of the stomach into the small bowel. As the placer continues to progress the tube to the 70-75 centimeter mark, you may visualize blanching of the tissue as the tube approaches the gastric antrum. At this point, the placer has progressed the tube to the 70-75 centimeter mark down at the base of the patient's stomach. We will be looking for the tube to progress into the small bowel, which can be easily seen by rapid movement of the feeding tube almost popping into the small bowel, as can be seen here. We now see a change in the tissue. The tissue of the small bowel is covered with finger-like projections called villi that will move around the feeding tube in a wave-like fashion. Once you've progressed the tube to the desired depth, you may end the procedure. Prior to initiation of enteral feeding, confirm placement of the feeding tube per facility protocol.